This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Holder. It's Jeff Kodadami. Welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this date. And on this day, January the 28th, in the year 1996, Super Bowl 30 took place between the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. They wanted to make it big with Super Bowl Triple X being extra, extra, extra large, if you will. But the fact of the matter is that one team did much better than the other team. So anyway, the story of Super Bowl 30 it goes back to 1990. How? You may ask. Well, I'll tell you how. So anyway, March 1990, Tempe, Arizona was going to host the Super Bowl. As you know, the Arizona Cardinals were playing in that stadium. So they were going to have the first time ever the state of Arizona was going to hold the Super Bowl. But that was for Super Bowl 27 in 1993. However, because of Arizona refusing to recognize Martin Luther King Day, the state was rightfully yanked from stuff. People avoided that state like the plague. There was a big boycott. Arizona adopted the federal holiday in 1992. Super Bowl 27 was taken away from Tempe and given to Pasadena instead. But with Arizona recognizing Martin Luther King Day, the NFL owners in 1993 decided to give Super Bowl 30 to Tempe, Arizona. In fact, it's actually the last to be hosted at a stadium containing bleacher seats, as every stadium has had, like, you know, normal seating. And would be the last Super Bowl on a college campus, because Sun Devil Stadium is home to the Arizona State Sun Devils. So anyway, the Dallas Cowboys one of the two teams in the Super Bowl were trying to go three out of four. They won the Super Bowls in 93 and 94. In 95, they lost to the conference finals to San Francisco, who went on to win the Super Bowl. And so the Cowboys were trying to go three out of four. No team in NFL history had done that. Not even the Niners had a three out of four thing. So anyway, this was the eighth time the Cowboys were in the Super Bowl, which would be the franchise mark at the time. Both Pittsburgh, well, Pittsburgh, New England, and Denver would tie that mark, but Dallas was the first to eight Super Bowls as a franchise. Dallas was huge because they got Jerry Jones and Jimmy Johnson working together. Unfortunately, though, the relationship was fractured and all that. And Barry Switzer, who was once a great college coach at Oklahoma, was hired to be the head coach of Dallas and all that. The 95-96 Cowboys were 12-4, and four, the best in the NFC. Troy Aikman was a Pro Bowl quarterback and put up over 3,300 passing yards. Emmitt Smith won his fourth rushing crown with over 1,700 yards and put up 25 touchdowns, which was the record for most rushing touchdowns in a season. Gerald Boost Johnson was a good fullback. Michael Irvin and Kevin Williams were reliable wide receivers. Jay Novacek, great as a tight end. The offensive line of Larry Allen, Ray Donaldson, Nate Newton, and Mark Tenoy were huge in all that. Dallas would make a major move picking up Deion Sanders, who was at 49er the previous year and who had sunk the Cowboys. If you can't beat him, buy him. But because of injuries, Dion only played nine games. But he still had his moments. Darren Woodson was a good safety. Larry Brown picked up six interceptions for the Cowboys with two pick sixes. Charles Haley put up ten and a half sacks. And Brock Merriam was a good safety. Dallas were eight and one, and then they were faltering. And all that. But thankfully, though, they were convincing. After beating both the Eagles and Packers in the Super Bowl playoffs to get this far. Was huge. Then came the Pittsburgh Steelers, 95. Pittsburgh hadn't been to a Super Bowl since 1980, and this would be the first time Bill Cower would lead the team to a Super Bowl. Cower was the team's coach in 92 after Chuck Noll retired after 23 years. Cower's first year, the Steelers were the number one seed in the AFC, but shockingly lost on home turf to Buffalo 24-3. The Bills went on to get to the Super Bowl. 
Cower was hoping that the Steelers would look good. But in 94, 94-95, in the AFC title game, they got shocked at home by the Chargers. Who went on to lose to the Niners in the Super Bowl? Anyway, the Steelers were 3-4, and four, even an upset loss to the Jaguars, who were expansion team at that time. They put up 8 out of 9 wins, and put up 11 wins, second best of the AFC. They had Neil Dull at quarterback, who was doing decently. Yancey Fickman, a good wide receiver. Ernie Mills, another good wide receiver. Eric Pegram and Bam Morris were a two-headed monster in the backfield. Norm Johnson was a good field goal kicker. And the offensive line was led by Demetri Dawson. The Steelers were second in yards allowed. Kevin Green, linebacker before he went to Carolina, was good. Greg Lloyd was also a good linebacker. Rod Woodson actually missed nearly the entire season due to a torn ACL. And somehow healed for the playoffs. He's the only NFL player in history to suffer and return from a torn ACL in the same season. So as I said, the Cowboys took care of the Eagles and the Packers. The Steelers crushed the Bills on home turf 40 to 21. And then in the AFC title game, they almost lost to the Colts. If it wasn't for a last second Hail Mary that bounced in the lap of Aaron Bailey of the Colts and he failed to make it. NBC would host the Super Bowl with the great Dick Enberg and Phil Simms doing their job and all that. Super Bowl 30 would actually be the first Super Bowl that would have the celebration celebration of the Lombardi Trophy on the field instead of the locker room. NBC would broadcast a one-hour episode of Friends after the Super Bowl. All that. It started a trend in which the prize post-Super Bowl time slot was given to a program not making its debut and all that. I mean, from 1983 to 95, when the, when they decided to have the Super Bowl lead-off program become a series premiere. Only three shows, The A-Team, Wonder Years, and Homicide, Life on the Street, were successful. So anyway, it was just huge at all that. Vanessa Williams sang the National Anthem. Several Super Bowl MVPs for the past joined the coin toss ceremony for to honor the 30th Super Bowl. So anyway, the Cowboys were with their home whites, the Steelers were with their home blacks, and all that. So anyway, Super Bowl 30, the Cowboys got the ball first on the first possession. Troy Aikman would throw a good pass to Michael Irvin and then Emmett Smith had a 23 yard rush. They went for a 42 yard field goal by Chris Bonio who kicked it. It was 3 to nil. So anyway, after a long possession, Aikman threw a short touchdown pass to Jay Novacek to make it 10 nothing Cowboys. And it looked pretty good though too. Steelers had to punt on their second possession. It was still 10 0. Anyway, Dallas kicked a field goal by Chris Bonio for 35 yards to make it 13 0. And then after exchange of punts, there were key plays as Cordell Stewart, who was the backup quarterback slash wide receiver, would net a first down. And then a touchdown pass from McDonald to Yancey Figpin with 13 seconds left. So the Cowboys take that 13-7 lead into halftime. There would be exchange of punts and all that. Larry Brown would pick off a Neil O'Donnell pass in the third quarter and returned it 44 yards to Pittsburgh's 18-yard line. After a, a tough pass to Michael Irvin, Emmitt Smith plunged in for one yard touchdown, Dallas 20-7. The Steelers couldn't do anything about it, and the Cowboys punted before the end of the third quarter. Fourth quarter, the Cowboys would face off against Pittsburgh. 
Dallas made a massive sack, which forced Pittsburgh to settle for a field goal by Norm Johnson. 46 yards? It's good. 20 to 10. Pittsburgh went for an onside kick and converted it. It was huge and all that. And it worked out because Bam Morris ran for a one-yard touchdown run, cutting Pittsburgh's deficit to 20 to 17. So the Cowboys were forced to punt, and it looked like Pittsburgh was going to get the Cowboys back and go 3-0 against them in Super Bowls. Unfortunately, on second down of the possession before 15 left, Neil O'Donnell accepted another O'Donnell pass and returned it to the Pittsburgh six-yard line. And it was like the first interception. A throw in the right flat under a heavy cover splits into the arms of Brown with no Steelers receiver in sight. Anyway, a lot of people would be like, why would O'Donnell throw to a spot and not a man in the Super Bowl? So, anyway, two plays later, Emmett Smith scored a touchdown. Cowboys were up 27-17. And then the Steelers were getting to the Cowboys 40 with a minute 42 left. Unfortunately, that failed miserably. Dallas ran out the clock. Almost ran out the clock. Pittsburgh did have a play, but Brock Marion made an interception of the last play. The Steelers outgained the Cowboys in yards. 310-254. It looked pretty good and limited it. Emmett Smith and the running back to 56 yards. But unfortunately, O'Donnell's interceptions were huge, which led to two Cowboys touchdowns off the turnovers. Aikman would go 15 for 23, 209 yards and a touchdown. Picking up his third Super Bowl win, making him the third quarterback to hit three Super Bowl wins at the time, of course. This is Nick. Not all that we all know about Tom Brady. Ebbett Smith became the fifth player after Lynn Swan, Franco Harris, Furman Thomas, and Jerry Rice to get a touchdown in three Super Bowl games. O'Donnell was 28 for 49, 239 yards, a touchdown, and three interceptions. I thought Larry Brown picked off three passes from O'Donnell, but no, he only did two. Anyway, it would be huge and all of that. So anyway, the big moment was Charles Haley becoming the first player ever to win five Super Bowl championships. He won Super Bowls in 89-90 with San Fran, and then with Dallas in Super Bowl uh, in 93-94, but... With this, this was his fifth ring. Barry Switzer was the second head coach, ironically, after Jimmy Johnson, to win a college football national championship and a Super Bowl title. Only one other coach, Pete Carroll, has done that. So then the NFL decided to begin the tradition of presenting the trophy on the field instead of the locker room. The outcome of the game would be huge for two soon-to-be free agents. Larry Brown was soon to be a free agent, and Oakland and Al Davis, who signed the previous, who would sign the next year's Super Bowl MVP, Desmond Howard, in a on this day I did a couple of days ago, to a contract with the Raiders. Unfortunately, Larry Brown was injury plagued and was cut by the Raiders. Neil O'Donnell left the Steelers and went to the Jets. Legging the Jets. Unfortunately, though, Neil O'Donnell famously got injured while practicing on the sidelines. And all that. Played by injuries and ineffective play. And basically would finish. Would be finished with the Jets from in 97. Both teams would make the playoffs the next year. The Cowboys and the Steelers. Both would be 10 and 6. Before losing round 2. Pittsburgh would get to the AFC title game in 98, hosting it, but Denver and John Elway would not be denied, and of course that was when Elway finally won the Super Bowl. Of course, the 96 offseason was huge because Pittsburgh was going to go with Bam Morris as running back. The only problem was Bam Morris got in deep trouble for possession of illegal drugs months after Super Bowl 30. And Pittsburgh went out to get Jerome Bettis in the 96 offseason. A lot of people forget that Bettis was not a Pittsburgh Steeler to start with. He was an L.A. Ram. Anyway, the Cowboys dynasty of the 90s would be broken up. A lot of people didn't think that would happen. But yeah, Super Bowl 30 was the last one. The Cowboys would only win one postseason game until 2009. 
So for 13 years, they only had one uh, postseason victory. And that was not against the Cardinals after shockingly losing the Cardinals. Injuries would force Michael Irvin and Moose Johnson to retire after 99 and Aikman the next year would retire due to injuries. Emmett Smith was still with Dallas till 2002 and then they released him. The triplets, as they were known as, were great and this was their final hurrah and all that. There were some records set that haven't really been set yet. So anyway, that would be all she wrote. And the Dallas Cowboys won three out of four Super Bowls. Dallas has not been to a Super Bowl, much less a conference championship since 1996. And that's just sad for how good they seem to have it. They had great some seasons, like the 2007-2008 season, they were like, what, 13-3. and three. They were the number one seed in the NFC and then lost at home to the Giants. That was just pathetic. But things happen. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond to do.